We haven't seen a console Prince of Persia game in a long time, but lately we have seen a lot of iOS Prince of Persia. Today we're talking about Prince of Persia, the shadow and the flame. Now this stars my good buddy, Jake Gyllenhaal, or someone who looks a lot like Jake Gyllenhaal, I must say. This guy looks nothing like him. He does, All he right. does. They totally made him look like Jake How Gyllenhaal. Can you tell? The graphics aren't that great. I mean, this is a port. This is true. But what we're doing in this game is this is the classic side-scrolling Prince of Persia experience. Now, this game does have this really long, convoluted backstory that I'll be honest with you, I just tapped the screen, I skipped that shit because I just want to play, I just want to jump, I want to be acrobatic, I want to jump over spikes, I want to not get killed by skeletons, and this game allowed me to do that. There's lots to explore here. You can go through a level and just find the exit relatively quickly and just go through and go to the next level, or what you could do is you can try to explore all of the level, which is something that I like to do because I wanted to get all those vials, even if it meant that if I got that vial, I would then fall to my death and have to use that very vial I just got. I still wanted to get it. I don't care. Well, there's in-app purchases that you can get, so you can get those little vials. You don't need to actually collect them, yeah, that's... but you can purchase them to then start off from where you died. I don't understand why there's in-app purchasing in this game because it's not the kind of game where you need it. You have so many vials, you can always start again, and like, what's the point of playing a game with that kind of cheating on? I think it's there because it does aid people that die a lot. Like myself, I would die a lot in the game yeah. only because sometimes the controls would fail me. Now the controls in this game aren't as bad as the original Prince of Persia port that we played. Right. These are much improved. And there's different options to have controls here. So you can have the virtual buttons that you see on screen, or you can just use the left and right, no buttons at all, just knowing that one side of the screen is to jump and one side of the screen is to attack. And that's all you need to know. I really did like the fighting because you have to parry your enemy attack and when you do that they're vulnerable for a while so you can get in there with a nice combo and you can finish the combo in different ways so the the fighting is actually just all swipes so you swipe towards the enemy or you swipe away and that's how you swing your sword and then depending on if you swipe up or you swipe down or left or right your finishing blow is something different and then the more you use it you can of course level up those finishing attacks so I thought that was pretty cool especially since you get different types of enemies coming at you the more you get into the dungeons of this game. You can purchase different combos, you can unlock different combos, so that is again where the in-app purchases come into play. So I didn't really like that it was constantly reminding me that I can actually put my own money into it. Jake Gyllenhaal wants your money so he can <laughs> beat up on skeletons. Jake Gyllenhaal has nothing to do with this game, we have to say that, as much as Sean it's wants him Jake to be in the game. Jake Gyllenhaal, you are Jake Gyllenhaal, you're running around. Oh my god. <laughs> fun with the game and outside of the mildly flawed controls I enjoyed myself with this one and I'm going to recommend it as crazy as it sounds so if you're a POP fan I can't see why you wouldn't get this especially since we don't have any other POP games to play that are coming up that we know of Marissa what are you gonna give Prince of Persia the shadow and the flame getting a 7.5 I'm gonna give it a 7.5 as well oh.